Welcome to Performer Stuff Pro Series, a collaborative forum where working professionals can share together their knowledge, experience, hopefully a little wisdom, but most importantly, their collective passion for live entertainment. I'm Mark Pawsey, and today I'm talking once again with aerialist Alan Silver, finalist on this season's America's Got Talent. Alan, welcome. Hello, Mark. <laughs> Thank you for doing this again, and congratulations on making the final. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me again. I'm pleased to be here again, for sure. So how is it being a finalist on America's Got Talent? What does that mean for you? For me, it's, it means the world, because I, I didn't think I would get here, <laughs> to be honest, uh, because there's so many great talents in the show. And um, yeah, I was just really surprised. Uh, when they actually said that I was uh, going to the finals. So it means a lot to me just to be here representing our, you know, art. It's amazing. So, so far you've shown us the mixture of poetry and strength in your tissue acts. And I would say hardcore endurance and energy in the chains act. How are you planning to up the game for the finale? What secrets can you tell us? So, yeah, I know. So, uh... I don't want to, I don't want, there's certain things we cannot say or give away, uh, but I'm just trying to, again, do something different. I'm just trying to do something different and expose uh, to the audience at home for something that maybe they haven't seen it yet. How did you decide on the music for all of your um, acts for the finale? What, what, what into, went into that process? Yeah, I think I really like this question mark because a lot of people don't know about it and they, um, there are people that comment, you know, they're like, um, oh, I love that you chose the song or people comment, oh, I don't like the song or, uh, so it's an interesting question. It's like I mentioned before, we have a uh, creative team here um, and they, they are in charge of the acts in the show, all of them, and um, they they do a collaboration with the artist, right? And they basically, there's the legal part of it that people don't know. The songs needs to be cleared. That means that they need to have approval of the author or you know the singer to be able to use their song uh, on TV. So they come up with a list and then they present you a list of songs that they most likely will be cleared to be able to use. And then from that, uh, we narrow the selection down. So it just depends. Like there's songs that I like that maybe creative team don't think it might be a good choice. So they might present me different songs that they think it can be a good choice for the show. And then we go from there on the decision. Because to me, with the storytelling being so important and with there not being a live audience, that music is so key for you because you have to be able to use that for your energy and drive and for telling the story yeah. that's, that's all you have you don't have the energy of the audience totally yeah it's really different uh, performing with no audience it's really 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 different and we feed a lot from the audience and it's so true if we don't have the audience then we feed from the music i agree a hundred percent how influenced are you by what the public says over social media do you read it and does it how does it sit in your head? Yeah, so it's really interesting. We all read. We all read. I was talking to the other contestants and they they also mentioning things that they read on social media. We all read the social media. We want to know what's going on because we want to know what people are thinking, you know, and if we're going in the good direction, if we're not going in the good direction, if they're liking what we're doing, if not, and we want to see the overall, right? Um, basically, the overall messages. Uh, we do read and I really am not influenced by it because uh, there is a lot of haters out there. There's a lot of haters on the social media. And uh, the, the fact is that they're not here and they're not doing what we're doing, right? So the people, they are doing the bad comments, for an example, um, they're just being haters because they wanted to be haters, you know? So um, there are a couple ones, but... I just try to focus on the good ones. Just try because, to focus on the good ones. Because we talked before about bullying and it's a whole different aspect of bullying again. It's like, gosh, when, when your message to people is about not bullying and then there's people that bully it, just, uh, it, it's a, yeah. 
makes me makes me wonder. It's interesting. About humanity. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is very very interesting because, yeah, I am being bullied a lot right now, and uh, it's okay. I mean, you know what? Like I grew up being bullied, and uh, I still am bullied today. And you know, that's the way it is. You know, it whatever. I'll move on. You know, keep doing what I do. But um, it's interesting because there were previous comments, people saying, oh, but you like going back in the past and you're talking about the past that you were bullied when you were a kid. And, you know, I was like, no, I'm not just talking about the past. It's happening right now, just when I move on to the finals. So, yeah. you know, what can I do? You know, my message is out there. And if people can take my message and turn into something good, that's great, you know, but if they take the message and they want to go ahead and bully some more, I, I mean, I can't help them, you know, so they decide, right, what, what is good for their life. Why has AGT become the phenomenon it is today? AGT, I think, you know, I, I, I see some people talking about AGT and I, I see some like bad comments about AGT. And I think it's really interesting because look at their on the on the fifteenth uh, season, and um, AGT for me is like it's the biggest variety show that there could be, you know, because they they have everything and they look at everything, and I think that is really cool. Um, there was a lady singing with her mouth closed, you know, so can you imagine? It's like that's what I mean. It's like it's like, I was like, what? It's like, you're saying with your mouth closed. So, <laughs> you know, it's like they look at everything, everything. It's so, this is cool. I think this is really cool. And it just gives people opportunity that we might not have in a different place, you know? So I think that's why HT, it is that big phenomenon because of this reason. It's like the biggest variety show, and they literally they look at everything and they give people opportunity. Yeah, I love that. Um, you said previously when we talked that flying gives you power and makes you feel invincible. What does that mean to Alan Silver? Yeah, so also it's a great question because people never really question what it means that to me, right? They get what I say, they understand, but not from my perspective. My perspective is that not I, it gives me power and I feel invincible, not comparing uh, to others, not overpowering others and not, not in that way, not being like, oh, I'm better than, than you, I'm better. No, it's just it makes me feel better about myself. That's what it does. It makes me feel better about me. I know that I can go for it. I know that I can... Um, reach for the stars. I know that I can pursue my dreams. I know that it just gave me that power inside of me to know that I am worthy, that I can, to prove to myself that I am worthy. So it's a lot of people, they, they ask me before, they're like, why are you saying that? Like, it makes you feel that you're better than everybody else? I'm like, no, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that it makes me feel better about myself. So. What advice would you give to somebody that's never flown and would love to learn how to fly? Yeah, I mean, everybody can learn. Everybody can learn. People's like, I can't do that. Like, yes, you can. Everybody can. Uh, don't let people tell you that you cannot. Um, my advice is that if you really want to learn aerial, uh, try to find a, a, a school, a gym, or a place that they, can, that they are offering aerial classes uh, so you can do it on the safest uh, way possible. Because uh, me growing up in the circus, we didn't have all this equipment. We didn't have all these like great mats that you can crash into. Um, we actually do without mats. You know, for the first time you're trying something, you you try, and you know, if it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well, and you you hit the floor. You know, so um, now we have all these great places that you can go to. You know, like you have you have good support for that. So just try to find a good gym that you know they have great support for you to learn aerial and find a good coach you know because that's really important having somebody that that have the fruits on the tree that mean done it great and are good at what they do so they can actually teach you you know meet you on a common ground to take you to higher ground that's what i would say that's that expression fruits yeah. on the tree 
hot. Yeah. <laughs> good. Um, so, Alan, one word to describe your journey on America's Got Talent. Unique. Good. Very unique. Everything is very unique. I love that. Alan, thank you so much for sharing a small part of yourself again within our Performer Stuff Pro Series and for helping to keep entertainment alive, nourished and full of hope. And for those watching this, please dream big. And while you're dreaming, look out for more Performer Stuff Pro Series coming your way real soon. Alan, we'll be watching you uh, at the finale and uh, toodle pip. Thank you, Mark, for everything. Thank you for having me again. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.